they're worms. So was we once. That's what Mr. Kate said. Just blobs of jelly coming out of the sea a jillion years ago. And then, about a hundred million years from the death of the dinosaurs, we have the Ice Age, which is also known as the P L. S-T-O-C-E-N-E, Pleistocene, E-P-O-C-H, Pleistocene Epoch. And that's when the first humans reached Europe. Where did these humans come from? How did they evolve? Well, we do know from the study of animal fossils found in Africa that the African ape... That's enough! What? What are you doing here? You are in violation of Public Act, Volume 37, Statute Number 31428. You have been warned, Kate. Now, just a minute. You can't come barging into my classroom like this. This is a public classroom. You are under arrest. Take it. Rachel, now go on back to your class. Hey, it's coming! He's coming! Hey, everybody! He's coming! Stand back! Stand back! Stand back! Stand back! Stand back! Stand back! Stand Shield your gaze, madam. Huh? Matt, you're about to meet the mightiest of the mighty, Matthew Harrison Brady. A man who wears a cathedral for a cloak and a church spire for a hat. I voted for him twice for president. Once in 19 odd odd and again in 19 odd eight. Brady to the city of Hillsborough. And as mayor, let me assure you, sir, that we are proud to have with us the warrior who has always fought for us ordinary people. God bless you. God bless those dear little children. Mrs. Brady and I are delighted to be among you. Rachel, you're not leaving now, are you? 
Excitement's just starting. Mr. Meeker, don't let my father know I came here. Reverend, don't tell me his business. Don't see why I should tell him mine. I want to see Bert. Is it all right? <laughs> Rachel, this ain't a proper place for a minister's daughter. I only want to see him for a minute. All right. Thank you, Mr. Meeker. Come on. You know, it feels kind of queer having a school teacher in jail here. Might improve the writing on the walls, though. I guess our best catch was that uh, fellow from Minnesota. The one that chopped up his wife. You know, we had to extradite him. Leave you two alone. Bert, don't run off. Hello, Bert. Rachel, I told you not to come here. Stopped by your place, picked up some of your things. Got your clean shirt, and some handkerchiefs, your best tie. Thank you. Bert, why can't you just tell them you're sorry that you didn't mean to break the law? Tell them it was all a joke and that you'll never do it again. A joke? Admit that you're wrong. I'm not wrong. Then why is a great man like Matthew Brady coming here on a special train? Matthew Brady can go jump in a lake. Bert. Rachel, I happen to believe in evolution and nobody... Tell me that man was just stuck here on Earth like a geranium in a flower pot. We come from a long, long miracle, and that didn't just happen in seven days. You can't teach that, Bert. There's a law against it. I know that there is a law against it. Damn it, Rachel, why do you think I'm here? Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cuss. Everyone says what you did is bad. Did you know that at the top of the world, that the twilight there is six months long? We don't live at the top of the world. We live in Hillsboro. And when the sun goes down, it's dark. Why do you try to make it different? Why can't you just be on the right side of things? Your father's side? Testify for the defense or the prosecution. You got a penny, he'll take it. Oh, you bet he will. He's the father of the human race. <laughs> yeah. uh, could I have your attention, please? Everybody quiet. Quiet, please. Let me have your attention. Thank you. At this time, I would like to make the announcement that the governor of our state has vested in me the authority to confer upon Mr. Brady the commission of honorary colonel in the state militia. I want to thank each and every one of you, and I have a little surprise for you. It was on this very day in 1892 that I married this beautiful woman you see by my side. Lucy, look at this, this truly magnificent watermelon. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Brady, mm. my husband and I voted for you twice. Thank you. I hope it wasn't in the same election. <laughs> uh, Mr. Brady, I don't believe you've met Mr. Davenport. He's our local prosecutor. Of course. We'll be on the same team, you and I. Glad to have you aboard. Thank you, sir. 
Is it true, sir, that you're going to have another run at the presidency? Well, it's not exactly a secret any longer. Can I put you on that, Mr. Brady? Are you definitely running? Who are you? Evie Hornback, Philadelphia Bulletin. I've covered most of your campaigns, Mr. Brady, but the Bulletin has sent both of us down here to cover this trial. Both of you? Yes, sir. The most brilliant reporter in America today, sir, myself. And the most agile legal mind of the 20th century, sir. And who is that? Henry Drummond. He got those child murderers off last year. Perverting evidence. Casting the guilt away from the accused and onto society. I saw him in a courtroom once. You look into his face and you wonder why God could make such a man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please. I think you're letting your emotions run away with you. Henry Drummond is an old friend. He'll be a very worthy adversary. I welcome him. You welcome him? The enemy has sent their Goliath to confront us. This can only magnify our cause. Thank you, son. A toast to tomorrow, and to the beginning of the trial, to the success of our cause. <laughs> toast and good old American lemonade. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to our victory over Henry Drummond. What a day, Lucy. What a wonderful day. Indeed, glorious. These people, the very salt of the earth, this town, Hillsboro, that's what America's all about. Mm. Thank you. Were you surprised that Henry's coming here? No. Roman likes to fight. Remember the way he fought for me in that first election? Yes. This time he's not on your side. Well, he'll do his job, and I'll try to do mine. Mr. Brady, I love you very much. You look just like you did the very first day I saw you standing in front of Clarendon Hall in the college campus. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that white hat you wore? Thank God for that hat. If it hadn't blown off, if I hadn't chased after it, we might never have met. Yes, we would. Hmm? It didn't actually blow off. Lucy, after 32 years, <laughs> happy anniversary. It's late, Mr. Brady. Let's go to bed. yesterday? Oh, I sang a sweet song about the hometown heretic here in heavenly Hillsboro. Bert Cates, boy Socrates, latter-day Dreyfus, accused and soon to be condemned by a cruel and indifferent authority. This boy isn't a latter-day anything. Oh, come on, Henry. I know I may be rancid butter to you, 
But I am on your side of the bread. I doubt very much if you're on anybody's side. <laughs> yeah, well, you might have something there, Henry. I'm admired for my detestability. Would you, uh, like a bite in the tree of knowledge? Awful good. Well, devil, welcome to hell. <laughs> Folks, if you can stay against the wall, we can keep a passageway through here for others to get through. Thank you. You're going to get in, Herb. Don't you worry about it. Everybody's going to get inside. I've never seen anything like it, Ed. Most people try to stay out of jury duty. And do you attend church regularly, Mr. Bannister? Only on Sundays. Well, that's good enough for the prosecution, Your Honor. We accept this man as a member of the jury. Whoa, 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 whoa. One moment, Mr. Bannister. You're not excused. I wanted a uh, front row seat there in the jury box. Oh, well, hold your horses, Bannister. You may get it yet. <laughs> Proceed, Mr. Drummond. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Bannister, what makes you so anxious to get that front seat over there? Well, everybody says it's going to be quite a show. Yeah, so I hear. You ever read anything in a book about evolution? No. About a man named Charles Darwin? Um, well, can't say as I have. Bet you read your Bible, though. No. How come? Can't read. <laughs> you are fortunate. He'll do. Take your seat on the jury. Counsel for the defense showing us the latest fashion of the great metropolitan city of Chicago? <sighs> Glad you asked me that. I brought these along special. Just so happens I bought these galluses at Peabody's General Store in your hometown, sir, Weeping Water, Nebraska. Oh, I, I believe the French have a saying. Touche. Gentlemen, please. Let us proceed. <laughs> Your occupation, Mr. Dunlap. Farmer. You believe in the Bible? I believe in the Holy Word of God. This man is acceptable to the prosecution. Defense. No question, not acceptable. Good heavens, does Mr. Drummond refuse this worthy citizen a place on the jury simply because he believes in the Bible? Well, if you find an evolutionist in this town, you can refuse him. Your Honor. I must object to the defense counsel refusing a worthy citizen without even asking him a question. All right. I'll ask him a question. How are you, Dunlap? Well, I'm fine. So am I. Excused. You may step down, Mr. Dunlap. You are excused. Your Honor. I can appreciate a jest as well as anyone, but the note of levity which the defense counsel is introducing into these proceedings is, I believe, demeaning. Oh, the bench agrees with you in spirit, Colonel Brady. Thank you. Colonel Brady, what may I ask is all this damn Colonel talk? I'm uh, not familiar with Mr. Brady's military record. Well, he was uh, recently made an honorary colonel in our state militia. Oh, well, sir, the use of this title prejudices the case against my client. Conjures up a picture of a colonel on a white horse with all the forces of right and righteousness behind him. What do you suggest? Break him. Make him a private. I have no serious objection to the honorary title of private, Brady. Hey, By authority of, I'm sure the governor won't object, uh, I hereby appoint you a temporary honorary colonel in the state militia. 
gentlemen, what can I say? It isn't often in a man's life that he attains the exalted rank of temporary honorary colonel. Your name and occupation, sir? Uh, George Sillers. I work at the feed store. Do you consider yourself a religious man? Uh, I guess I'm as religious as the next man. Hillsboro, sir, that means a great deal. Do you have any children? Not that I know of. If you had a son or daughter, Mr. Sillers, what would you think if that child came home from school and told you that his teacher had insisted without question that somehow all of us evolved from a gorilla? Objection. We're supposed to be choosing jury members. The prosecution is denouncing the defendant before the trial's even begun. Objection sustained. Mr. Sillers seems like a good, honest man. We accept him. Thank you, Colonel Brady. Colonel Drummond. Sir, you just said you were a religious man. Do you work at it very hard? Well, I'm pretty busy down at the feed store. My wife uh, tends to the religion for both of us. In other words, uh, you take care of this life and she takes care of the next one. Objection. Objection sustained. <sighs> While your wife was tending to the religion, did you ever bump into a fellow named Charles Darwin? Not, not too recent. From what you've heard of this, Darwin, uh, you think your wife would want to have him over for Sunday dinner? Your Honor, I have no idea what kind of a dinner companion Mr. Darwin might prove to be, but I do think that my worthy opponent is cluttering the issue with hypothetical questions. I'm doing your job, Colonel. Thank you, sir. But I think the prosecution is perfectly capable of handling its own arguments. Well, I've established that Mr. Sillers here isn't working very hard at the religion. For your sake, I want to make sure he isn't working at evolution. I'm just working at the feed store. <laughs> this man is all right. Take a box seat. Your Honor, we're not altogether satisfied that Mr. Sillis... Uh, out of order. Uh, prosecution has already accepted this man. Yes, yes, we have. But I can't help but continue to question your lack of seriousness. I want a fair trial. So do I. A jury, any jury, should at the very least conform to the laws and patterns of society. Conform? What do you want to do? Run them all through the Brady meat grinder so they all come out the same? I've seen what you can do with jury, sir. Twist and tangle them, but you won't get away with that here. All I'm trying to do, Colonel, is to prevent you clock stoppers from dumping a load of medieval nonsense into the United States Constitution. It's got to stop somewhere. My life has been devoted to upholding the Constitution. You are both out of order. Now, the bench holds that the jury has already been selected. Because of the lateness of the hour, this court is now recessed until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. One moment. One moment, please. I wish to announce that Colonel Brady will be speaking to us tonight at our prayer meeting at Beacon Hall. You all invited. I object to this commercial announcement commercial announcement or the Reverend Brown's product. Why don't you announce there's going to be an evolutionist meeting? I have no knowledge of any such of a meeting. Yes, that's understandable. I mean, it's bad enough that everybody coming into this courtroom has to walk under a banner saying, read your Bible daily. I, I want that sign taken down. Or if not, I want another one put up just as big, just as big letters which says, read your Darwin daily. That's preposterous. It certainly is. And you are out of order. This court is in recess. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you. God love you. God love you. Thank you. Mr. Drummond? Hmm? Please. We've got to call this thing off. It's not too late. If Bert just admits that what he did was wrong, they'll stop all this fuss and everything could be like it was. Who are you? I'm, I'm a friend of Bert's. You want to quit? Yes. Well, I can change the plea. I, I can call off this whole business right now, but only on one condition. If you honestly believe 
that you have committed a criminal act against the people of this state and the minds of their children, if you honestly believe that you're wrong and the state and the law is right, well, the hell with it. I'll pack up my grip and go back to Chicago. He knows he broke the law. He knows he's wrong. Don't prompt the witness. What's the verdict, Bert? You're going to find yourself guilty before the jury does? No, sir. Bert. I'm not going to quit. Let's go, Bert. I got to bring you back in. I say to them, the greatest man that ever walked the face of the earth was born in a little town. That town was called Bethlehem. We don't measure greatness by the size of where we live. We measure greatness by those principles we live by. Yesterday at that marvelous picnic they gave Lucy and me, they were serving watermelon. Mm -hmm. Delicious. <laughs> I couldn't help thinking about that watermelon last night. I know. You're all looking at yourselves and saying, watermelon, what on earth is Brady talking about? My dear friends, I'm talking about the sheer glory of God's creations. Beautiful, lustrous green on the outside, and inside the green, a layer of white. And within that white, a core of red. And scattered within that red are little black seeds. Now, each of these seeds gathers from somewhere 10,000 times its own weight to construct another glorious watermelon. Who drew the plan? by which these little seeds work their wonders, huh? Who? Until the scientists of this world can explain to me a watermelon, never let them question the power of the Almighty! <laughs> Tonight, in this godly Christian town, there is a young man who has turned his back upon God. Shall we call hellfire down upon this man? Yes! Oh, all eternity to let his soul writhe in anguish and damnation. Curse, even though he be my own brother. must never destroy that which we hope to save. Remember the wisdom of Solomon in the book of Proverbs. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind. Forgive. Forgive this young man. Let the sweet love of our Savior enter his heart tonight and turn away those demons that would destroy him. Kate, we love you. We love you. Glory be to God. We love you. Inspiration. Inspiration. Truly inspired. Now, Henry, I hardly expected to see you here tonight. Oh, I like to hear the word once in a while, see what I'm missing. You're very good, Matt. Make one hell of a minister. 
coming from someone like you, I really appreciate that. They tell me you're going to make another run for the presidency. It's possible. What is it you want to accomplish, Matt? Well, it's very simple. There's a new spirit in the land, and I want to bring this country back to the values it once had. I want to bring this country back to God. I didn't know he left. Unfortunately, there's still those who want to drive God out of the universe. Oh, yes, they search for him in microscopes, but he's too small to see. They look for him in telescopes, but he's too large to see. They can't find him among the stars, so they declare there is no God. Are you one of those, Henry? Is that why you're here? I'm here to defend a young man holding a candle. I don't want him to get burnt. Henry, what is it? What happened? We were good friends once. That's true. We had a mutuality of understanding and admiration, didn't we? Yes. I can never forget. You spoke for me in my first run for the presidency. I did it gladly. I did it because I believed in you. Because I thought you had a certain quality of character, of spirit, that the country desperately needed. Well, then tell me, my dear friend, why is it that you've moved so far away from me? All motion is relative, Matt. Perhaps it's you who have moved away by standing still. Matt? Evening, Lucy. Hello, Henry. You look lovely, Lucy. You never change. It's good to see you again. I mean that. Thank you, Henry. Henry. Someday, somehow. I'm going to bring you back to the Lord. I am, Henry. God loves you. He wants you back. And then he said, well, uh... Go on, Howard. What did Mr. Cates tell you in the classroom? Well, he said that at first, that the earth was too hot for any life. And then it cooled off some, and cells and things began to live. Cells? Well, little bugs like in the water. And then the little bugs got to be bigger bugs, and they sprouted legs and crawl up on land. And how long did this all take, according to Mr. Cates? A couple million years. A million? Maybe longer. And then comes the fishes and the reptiles and the mammals. Man's a mammal. Along with the dogs and the cattle in the field. Did he say that? Yes, sir. Now, Howard, how did man emerge from this slimy mess of bugs and serpents, according to your professor? Well, man was sort of evoluted from the old world monkeys. Well, did you hear that, my friends? Old world monkeys. According to Mr. Cates, you and I aren't even developing good old American monkeys. <laughs> Listen carefully. In all this talk of bugs and evolution and slime and ooze, did Mr. Cates ever make any reference to God? Not as I remember. Or the miracle he achieved is described in the beautiful book of Genesis? No, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, objection. I ask the court to remind the learned counsel that this is not a prayer meeting. He's supposed to be submitting evidence to the jury. There are no ladies on the jury. Mr. Drummond, I have no intention of making a speech. But everyone within the sound of this boy's voice is moved by his tragic confusion. He has been taught that he wriggled up like an animal from the filth and muck below. I say to you, these Bible haters, these evolutionists are brewers of poison. And thank God this state has had the wisdom to demand that these peddlers of poison label their products. Yes, sir, Colonel. Well, I'm 
sure glad Colonel Brady didn't make a speech. Now, I heard you say the earth used to be pretty hot. Mr. Cates read it to us from a book. Do you know what book? Well, I guess the one Mr. Darwin thought up. Figure anything's wrong about that, Howard? I don't know. Objection. The defense is asking that a 13-year-old boy hand down an opinion on the question of morality. Your Honor, I am trying to establish that Howard or Mr. Brady or Charles Darwin or anyone in this courtroom, or you, sir, has the right to think. The right to think is not on trial. With all respect to the bench, I hold that the right to think is very much on trial. It is fearfully in danger in the proceedings of this court. A man is on trial. A thinking man. And he is being threatened with fine and imprisonment because he chooses to speak what he thinks. Colonel Drummond, would you rephrase your question, please, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Let's put it this way, Howard. All this fuss and feathers about evolution, did it hurt you any? Sir? What well, did it harm you? You still feeling fit? Uh, what uh, Mr. Cates told you? Did it uh, hurt your baseball game any? Affect your pitching arm? No, sir. I'm a lefty. Southpaw, huh? <laughs> still honor your father and your mother? Sure. Haven't committed murder since breakfast. Objection. Oh. Objection sustained. Once again, Mr. Drummond attempts to make light of this proceeding. Let him ask this boy if his faith in the scriptures has been shattered. When I need your valuable help, Mr. Brady, you may rest assured I shall most humbly ask for it. Now, Howard, do uh, you believe everything that Mr. Cates told you? I'm not sure. I gotta think it over. Good for you. Pa's a farmer, isn't he? Yes, sir. Got a tractor? Brand new. Are you a tractor sinful because it isn't mentioned in the Bible? Don't know. Now, Moses never made a phone call. Suppose a telephone is an instrument of the devil? I never thought of it that way. Neither did anyone else, Howard. Members of the jury, the defense makes the same old air of all godless men confusing material things with the great spiritual message of the Bible. Why do you bewilder this child? Does right have no meaning to you, sir? Realizing it may prejudice the case against my client, I must say that right has no meaning to me whatsoever. It doesn't surprise me. Truth has meaning as a direction. But it is one of the imbecilities of our time that we place this grid of morality on human behavior so that every act of man must be measured against an arbitrary latitude of right and longitude of wrong in exact minutes, seconds, and degrees. Have you any idea what I'm talking about, Howard? No, sir. Well, maybe you will, someday. That's all, son. Thank you. Witnesses excused. <laughs> Howard? We don't need you anymore. Going back to your paw now. Does the prosecution wish to call any further witness? No, Your Honor. Not at this time. Well, sure. Yeah, sure. There's no rules against it. <laughs> and after all, you are as... His lawyer. Yeah. Hi, Bert. How you holding up, son? I guess, you know, I'm well as can be expected. I'm a little more uneasy. Yeah, I thought you might be. What's going to happen, Mr. Drummond? What do you think is going to happen? Are they going to send me to prison? Well, they could. You know, when they started this fire here, they didn't figure they'd light up the whole sky. A lot of people's shoes are getting hot. I can't be sure. Well, Mr. Brady seems sure he seems to know exactly what the verdict's going to be. No, nobody knows. I got a pretty good idea. You've been a lawyer as long as I have, a thousand years, more or less. You get so you can smell what the jury's thinking. And what are they thinking right now? 
Uh, someday I'm going to get me an easy case. Open and shut case. I got a friend up in Chicago, a big lawyer. Lord, how the money rolls in. <laughs> you know why? He never takes a case unless it's a sure thing. It's like a jockey who won't go into a race until he's riding the favorite. Sure picked a long shot this time, Mr. Drummond. <laughs> a golden dancer. That was my first long shot. She was in the big side window of the general store in Wakeman, Ohio. I used to stand out in the street and say to myself, if I had golden dancer, I'd have everything in the world I wanted. I was seven years old and very fine judge of rocking horses. <laughs> she had a bright red mane and blue eyes, and she was gold all over with purple spots. And when the sun hit her stirrups, it was a dazzling sight to see. But she was a week's wages for my father, so Golden Dancer and I always had a plate glass window between us. And let's see. It wasn't Christmas. Must have been my birthday. I woke up in the morning, looked across the foot of my bed, and there was Golden Dancer. My mother had skimped on grocery. My father worked nights for a month. And I jumped in the saddle, and I started to rock. and it broke. It split in two. The wood was rotten. The whole thing was put together with spit and ceiling wax. All shine and no substance. Bert, whenever you see something bright and shining, perfect seeming, all gold, purple spots. Look behind the paint. And if it's a lie, show it up for what it really is. Gentlemen, we will now hear some words from the defense, Colonel Drummond. Uh, Your Honor, I want to call Dr. Amos D. Keller, head of the Department of Zoology at the University of Chicago. Objection. On what grounds? Now, what possible relevance can the testimony of a zoology professor have in this trial? There's every possible relevance. My client is on trial for teaching evolution. Any testimony relating to the alleged infringement of the law must be admitted. Irrelevant, immaterial, inadmissible. Why? My client, Bertram Cates, were on trial for murder. Would it be irrelevant to call expert witnesses to examine the weapon? Would you rule out testimony that the murder weapon was incapable of firing a bullet? I failed to grasp learned counsel's meaning. Uh, Your Honor, uh, we simply want Dr. Keller to explain to the jury exactly what the evolutionary theory is. How can they pass judgment on it if they don't know anything about it? They know what the law is all about in this state. They certainly don't need an expert to tell them what the law means or to try and defeat it in this courtroom simply because he disagrees with it. Court rules that zoology is irrelevant to the case. All right, then. I'd like to call Dr. Alan Page, a deacon of the Congregational Church and professor of geology at Oberlin College. Objection. Objection sustained. In one breath, does the court deny the existence of zoology and geology? No, we do not deny the existence of these sciences, but they don't relate to this point of law. Well, I call Walter Aronson, philosopher, anthropologist, author, one of the most brilliant minds in the world today. Objection, Colonel Brady. Objection, Colonel Drummond. <laughs> Your Honor. The defense is brought to Hillborough at great expense and inconvenience. These noted scientists, 
the great thinkers of our time. Now, their testimony is basic to the defense of my client. For I intend to show this court that what Bert Cates spoke in school was no crime. It is incontrovertible as geometry in every enlightened community of minds. The language of the law is clear, and we don't need experts to argue the validity of a law that's already on the books. Well, view of the court's decision, uh, the defense... Defense requests a court recess till tomorrow morning. Does the prosecution have any objections? In the interest of justice, we wish to try and give the defense every opportunity to try and support its uh, insupportable position. Well, this court is in recess until tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Rachel, I've told you to keep away from here. It's only going to upset you. Come along. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Amen. Oh, yes, yes. I could feel it, Lucy. I could just feel the Holy Spirit in that courtroom today it was all around me, guiding me. Judgment will be brought against that young man. Don't be too severe in your judgment, Matt. Not mine, not the course, not the jury's. God's own judgment will be brought against him. And when the jury hears. Oh, I'll get it, darling. Hello. It's Rachel Brown, dear. Hello? Uh, the Reverend Brown's daughter? Oh, yes. Come in. Thank you. I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, not at all, not at all. Well, Reverend Brown must be very proud to have such a beautiful and charming daughter. Mr. Brady, I, I don't quite know how to. Well, that is, I. Good heavens, child, you seem very upset. If you'll excuse me. Yeah. Please. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Mm. Now, what is it, dear? What troubles you? It's Bert. Bert Cates. Yes? You see, we... We plan to be married in the spring, and... I just, no, I just don't know anymore. It's like everything's caving in on us now. I'm a teacher, too, at the same school, and ever since this happened... Of course. I can understand your loyalty to this young man. Isn't there some other way out of this? Could I ask you some personal questions about Mr. Cates? Well, I... Now then, Rachel. May I call you Rachel? Let's have a nice long chat. There's no radio stuff allowed in there. Not till they hand down a verdict. Keep the center aisle clear, please. Please, no standing in the center aisle. All rise. Hear ye, hear ye. The
the case of the state versus Bertram Cates is now in session. Be seated. Colonel Brady, do you have any other witnesses you wish to produce? Yes, Your Honor, I would like to call upon Mr. Elston Harps. Your Honor, we've just discovered that Mr. Harps, principal of the consolidated Hillsboro School, has just been taken with a severe cold. But we reserve the right to call upon him later. Well, any other witnesses at the present time? Colonel Brady? I would like to call upon Miss Rachel Brown. Step forward, please, Miss Brown. I don't understand. Is she testifying against me? Raise your right hand, please. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Be seated. Miss Brown, you are a teacher at the Hillsboro Consolidated School? Yes. So you've had ample opportunity to know the defendant, Mr. Cates, professionally? Yes. Do you and Mr. Cates attend the same church? Not anymore. But dropped out two summers ago. Why? Mr. Brady, I told you that in confidence. Answer the question, Miss Brown. I ask you why. Why did Bertram Cates drop out? Because. Because of the Stebbins boy. Well, tell us about the Stebbins boy, Miss Brown. He. The boy was uh, 11 years old, and he went swimming in the river and got a cramp and drowned. Bert felt awful about it. He lived right next door, and Tommy Stebbins used to come over and look through Bert's telescope. Bert said he had a quick mind and might even be a scientist when he grew up. At the funeral, though, they preached that Tommy didn't die in a state of grace because his folks didn't have a baptized. You tell them what they really said? That Tommy's soul was damned, writhing in hellfire. Religion is supposed to comfort people, isn't it? It is not supposed to frighten them to death. We will have order, please. Your Honor, I request that the defendant's remarks be stricken from the record. So ordered. Go ahead, Miss Brown. Tell the jury some more of Mr. Kate's opinions on the subject of religion. Objection. Objection. Hearsay. Testimony is not admissible. The court sees no objection to this line of questioning. Proceed. Just tell us in your own words some of the conversations you had with the defendant. I don't remember exactly. What you told me last evening, that presumably humorous remark Mr. Cates made about the Heavenly Father? But... Go ahead, my dear. I can't. May I remind you, Miss Brown, that you're under oath and that it is unlawful to withhold pertinent information. Well, he, he was just talking about some of the things he'd read. But weren't you shocked? When he said to you that God did not create man, man created God. Jack, Jack. He was joking. Joking? What he said was that God created man in his own image, and man being a gentleman returned the compliment. Go ahead, my dear. What did he say about the holy state of matrimony? Did he not compare it with the breeding of animals? No, he didn't say that. He didn't, he didn't mean that. That's not what I told you. It's, it's sad. Have a sip of this, Mr. Brown. 
Your Honor, I would ask that the witness be dismissed. And will the defense have no chance to challenge some of the statements the prosecutor has torn from this witness? No, don't. Let her go. No questions, Your Honor. The witness is excused. Does the prosecution have any further witnesses? No, Your Honor. We shall now proceed to the case for the defense. Your Honor, may I approach the bench? Come ahead. Your Honor, I have taken the time and opportunity since yesterday to thoroughly examine the question of admission to this trial of scientific experts. That is no longer a matter before this court. Specifically, in the case of the State of New Jersey v. Thomas Bancroft, 1917. I have told you, Mr. Drummond, that this court is not going to hear any arguments for the testimony of experts. In other words, the court rules out any expert testimony whatsoever on Darwin's origin of species or the descent of man? That's right. The court so rules. Would the court admit expert testimony regarding a book known as the Holy Bible? Any objections, Mr. Brady? If the counsel can advance the case of the defendant through the use of the Holy Scriptures, the prosecution will take no exception. Good. I call to the stand one of the world's foremost experts on the Bible and its teachings, Matthew Harrison Brady. Oh! Your Honor, this is preposterous. It's highly unorthodox. I've never known of an instance where the defense called the prosecuting attorney as a witness. Your Honor, this entire trial is unorthodox, but if the interests of truth and justice will be served, I will take the stand. But Colonel Brady... Sir, if you wish to decline as a witness against your own case, the court will support you. I shall not testify against anything. I will speak out as I have all my life on behalf of the living truth of the Holy Scriptures. Baker, swear him in. That won't be necessary. I tell you now, Henry, so help me God, I will tell the truth. I take it you will, Matt. Am I uh, correct, sir, in uh, calling on you as an authority on the Bible? Well, I've studied it for 50 years, more lately than in my youth, and I've always tried to live within its precepts. Bully for you. I suppose you can quote me, chapter and verse, right straight through the King James Version, can't you? No, sir. But there are many portions of the Bible that I have committed to memory. Mm. I uh, don't suppose you've managed to memorize many passages from Darwin's Origin of Species? No, sir. Never read it? No, sir. Well, then how in perdition did you have the gall to whoop up this holy war against something you don't know anything about? How can you be so cocksure that the body and scientific knowledge that is systematized in the writings of Charles Darwin is in any way irreconcilable to the spirit of the book of Genesis? For the simple reason, sir, that the conclusions of any mortal being on this earth can never take precedence over the Holy Bible. All right. Let me put it this way. On page 19 of Darwin's Origin of Species, Darwin states... I object to this, Your Honor. Mr. Brady has been called on as an authority on the Bible. If so, let him stick to the Bible. You will confine your questioning to the Holy Bible. All right. I get the sense in the wind. All right. We'll play in your ballpark, Colonel. Now, let's get this clear. This is the book that you are an expert on. I read it every day. Now tell me, do you feel that every word written in this book should be taken literally? I believe that everything in the Bible should be accepted as it is written. 
Now take this place where a whale swallows Jonah. Now do you think that actually happened? Well, the Bible doesn't say a whale. This is a big fish. Actually, it says a great fish, but I guess they're the same thing. Well, uh, what's your feeling about that? I believe in a God who can make a whale and who can make a man and make both do what he pleases. Amen. Amen. I want those amens in the record. Now, um, I recollect a story that uh, Joshua made the sun stand still. Now, as an expert, uh, wouldn't you say that's a pretty neat trick? <laughs> Suppose Zudini could do it? I never scoff at the miracles of the Lord. Never. Well, have you ever pondered just what would naturally happen to the earth if the sun stood still? You can testify to that when I get you on the stand. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they say the sun stood still, they must have had a notion that the sun moved around the earth. Think that's the way things are? Or uh, maybe you don't believe the earth moves around the sun. I believe in the Bible. I have faith in the Bible as it is written. Yeah, you don't have much faith in the solar system. The Bible says the sun stopped. The sun stopped. Good. Now, if what you say factually happened, if Joshua actually halted the sun in the sky, then the earth stopped spinning on its axis, continents toppled over each other, mountains flew off into space, and the earth, arrested in orbit, shriveled to a cinder and crashed into the sun. Now, how come they missed this tidbit of news? They missed it because it didn't happen. Well, it must have happened, according to natural law, or don't you believe in natural law? Maybe you'd like to ban Copernicus from the classroom, along with Charles Darwin. Pass a law wiping out all scientific development since Joshua. You believe in natural law? Natural law was born in the mind of the Heavenly Father. He can change it, cancel it, use it as he pleases. It constantly amazes me that you apostles of science, for all your supposed wisdom, fail to grasp that simple fact. Genesis 4, 16. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife. Now, where in the hell did she come from? Who? Cain's wife. Mrs. Cain. In the beginning, there were only Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. Where'd this extra woman come from? Did you ever figure that out? No, sir. I leave you agnostics to hunt for her. <laughs> it never bothered you. It never bothered me. I never tried to find out. Never. I figure uh, somebody pulled off uh, another creation over the next county. I've tried to convince you that the Bible satisfies me, but none are so deaf as those who refuse to listen. Well, sure does frighten me, sir, to imagine the state of learning in the world if everyone had your driving curiosity. Uh, this book now goes into a lot of begats. Uh, and a fraction begat Sala, and Sala begat Ebert. Ebert begat Pella. And so on and so on. Are these pretty important folks? Yes, sir. They are the generations of the holy men and women of the Bible. Oh, how'd they go about all this begatting? What do you mean? Well, I mean, did people begat in those days about the same way that they get themselves begat today? The process is the same. I don't think your scientists have improved it any. <laughs> in other words, uh, they were conceived and brought forth through the normal biological function known as sex. What do you think of sex, Colonel? In what spirit is this question asked? Well, I'm not asking you about sex as a father or a husband or a presidential candidate. You're up here as an expert on the Bible. What is the biblical evaluation of sex? It is considered original sin. Oh, so all these holy people got themselves begat through original sin. Mm. All this sinning make them any less holy? Colonel Drummond, I must ask you, what has this got to do with the state versus Bertram Cates? Your Honor, you've ruled out all my witnesses. You must allow me to examine the one witness you've left me in my own way. Your Honor, I wish Mr. Drummond to have all the latitude he wants. We know what he's after. He's here to condemn revealed religion. I am here to defend it. Well, let him ask any question he may wish. I'm perfectly willing to sit here and protect the word of God against the greatest atheists in the United States. Let him sneer. Let him show his disrespect. 
You're only pleading the case of the prosecution by your contempt for all that's holy. I object. I object. On what grounds? Is it possible there is something holy to the celebrated agnostic? Yes, the individual human mind. In a child's power to master the multiplication table, there is more sanctity than in all your shouted amens, holy holies, and hosannas. An idea is a greater monument than a cathedral, and the advance of man's knowledge is more a miracle than any sticks turned to snakes or parting of the water. <laughs> but are we to halt the march of progress because Reverend Brady frightens us with his parables from the Bible? Gentlemen, progress has never been a bargain. You have to pay for it. Sometimes I think there's a man behind the counter who says, all right, you may have a telephone, but you'll have to give up privacy, the charm of distance. Madam, you may vote, but at a price you lose the right to retreat behind a powder puff or a petticoat. Mister, you may conquer the air, but the birds will lose their wonder and the clouds will smell of gasoline. Darwin moved us forward to a hilltop where we could look back to see the way from which we came. But for this view, this insight, this knowledge, we must abandon our faith in the pleasant poetry of Genesis. We must never abandon faith. There is nothing greater than faith in God. Then why did God plague us with the power to think? Why do you deny the one faculty which lifts man above all other creatures on the earth? the power of his brain to reason. What other merit have we? The elephant is larger, the horse swifter and stronger, the butterfly more beautiful, the mosquito more prolific, even the simple sponge more durable. Or does a sponge think? I don't know, I'm a man, not a sponge. Do you think a sponge thinks? If the Lord wishes a sponge to think, it thinks. Does a man have the same privileges that a sponge does? Of course. This man wishes to be accorded the same privileges as a sponge. He wishes to think. Then let him soak up the word of God. Your client is wrong, sir. He is deluded. He has lost his way. How sad we aren't all gifted with your positive knowledge of right and wrong, Mr. Brady. Not mine. Not mine. God's. Oh, yes. You do speak to him occasionally. I keep forgetting. How old do you think this rock is? I'm more interested in the rock of ages than I am in the age of rocks. <laughs> Dr. Page of Oberlin College tells me that this rock is at least 10 million years old. Well, congratulations, Mr. Drummond. You've just managed to sneak in some of that scientific testimony after all. Mm -hmm. Look here, if you will. These are the fossil remains of a prehistoric marine creature which was found in this very county and which lived here millions of years ago. That rock cannot be more than 6,000 years old. How do you know? A fine biblical scholar, Bishop Usher, has determined for us the time of creation. It occurred in the year 4004 BC. That's Bishop Usher's opinion. It's not an opinion. It's literal fact arrived at through careful computation of the ages of the prophets as set down in the Old Testament. His meticulous analysis has determined that creation occurred in the fall of the year 4004 B.C. at 9 a.m. That Eastern Standard Time or Rocky Mountain Time? It couldn't have been daylight saving time because the Lord didn't even make the sun until the fourth day. The fourth day, that is correct. Well, that first day, was that a 24-hour day? The Bible says it was a day. That's sufficient for me. Well, there wasn't any sun. How do you know how long it was? The Bible says it was a day. 
Yes, I'm a normal day, a literal day, a 24-hour day. I don't know. Well, what do you think? Well, I don't think about things that... that I don't think about. Oh, do you ever think about things that you do think about? <laughs> I mean, isn't it possible that the first day could have been 25 hours long? I mean, there's no way to measure it, no way to tell. Could it have been 25 hours? It is possible. Oh. Are you saying, before this jury and the world, that the first day of creation could have been of an indeterminate length? No, no, no. I'm stating that God did not refer to it as a 24-hour day. Well, it could have been a 30-hour day, huh? Or a month. Or a year. Or a hundred years. Or ten million years. I protest. I demand to know the purpose of Mr. Drummond's examination. His purpose is clear from the very beginning, to destroy the Bible. You know that's not true. I'm trying to stop you bigots and ignoramuses from controlling the education of the United States. So that you might control it? I shall order the bailiff to clear the court unless there is order here. Your Honor, I will always speak up when the Bible is being attacked. The Bible is a book. It's a good book, but it's not the only book. It is the revealed word of the Almighty. God spoke to the men who wrote the Bible. Well, how do you know that God didn't speak to Charles Darwin? Show me where Darwin is mentioned in the Bible. I can tell you in this courtroom that God has told me to oppose the teaching of that man. Does he tell you exactly what to do and what not to do? Yes. And after he has spoken to you, do you act accordingly? Yes, yes, yes. So you, Matthew Harrison Brady, pass along God's orders to the rest of the world. Gentlemen, meet the prophet from Nebraska. <laughs> What if a lesser human being, a Cates or a Darwin, has the audacity to think that God might whisper to him that an unbrady thought might still be holy? Must men go to prison because they are at odds with a self-appointed prophet? Extend the testaments. Let us have a book of Brady. We shall hex the Pentateuch and slip you neatly in between Numbers and Deuteronomy. No more questions. You know what I believe. You know what I stand for. You are excused, Colonel Brady. I, I believe, yes, I believe in the book of Genesis. Exodus, Leviticus. This completes the testimony. The witness has been excused. Joshua, judges. First this court is adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Judges. Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, First King, Second King. How about I'd like to speak to you about striking all this from the record. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, First King, Second King, Isaiah. Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Hachai, Zechariah, Malachi. I'm not telling this go home. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. It's over now, Matt. The ungodly shall perish. He is a shield for me. I sing his praises. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Mr. Brady, Mr. No, Brady, I'm may sorry, I have a comment? Look, give us I'm a comment, sorry, please, on today's proceedings. Mr. Brady is working. What is your opinion of what happened tomorrow, Mr. Brady? Have to talk do, to him in do you the have morning. any comments? I'm sorry. Uh, this is this evening's edition, and I think you'll find it interesting. Give my regards to your husband, please. Matt, darling, it's it's late. Couldn't you finish that in the morning? Matt? 
laughed at me. They were laughing. God forbid I should fail here now. I know, darling, but, uh, well, after all, it is only one teacher in Hillsborough. One? One teacher's enough to bring this country back to where we were before. I tell you, Lucy, we've got to stop them now. Thank God there's still time. I'm drafting a closing argument that will bring the Henry Drummonds of this world to their knees. Listen, Lucy. Religion isn't hostile to learning. But can we ever permit learning that encourages godlessness in our students? Absolutely right, darling. Absolutely right. God is holding my hand. I feel the strength of a lion. again. The greatest pleasure of all will be in making you my first lady. The first lady of this land. I got 10 phone calls last night. The boys down at the state capitol, they don't like the way this thing is going. They want it over fast. I'm sorry, but that's not the way the judicial system works. The New York Times, the Chicago Tribune, this fellow from the Philadelphia Bulletin, and they're making us out to look like a bunch of nickel poops. Now, it's got to stop. And I'm telling you right back, the judicial process doesn't change so some politician Merle, can come up. I don't think you understand what I'm saying here. Now, the November elections ain't far off. And it's not going to do anybody any good to get the voters all up in a sweat. Now, damn it, you've got the gavel, don't you? Use it. I think it's time to go, Matt. Matt? Huh? Oh, yes, yes, yes. How are you feeling? Slept very fit for you last night. I propose a constitutional amendment requiring the Lord's Prayer in every school of this beautiful land. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. I came because it really is time. Run away. I've been thinking, sir. That maybe I could say a few words first to introduce. No, to pave the no, way no, for no, you. No, no, I'll take care of everything. I've got it all right here, Mr. Davenport. Lucy? I'm ready, darling. <laughs> Oh, I praise God, so am I. What's that? Mr. Drummond, we're putting in a direct wire to WGN Chicago. We'll broadcast the verdict as soon as it arrives. Oh, God, that's going to break down a lot of walls. You're not supposed to say God on the radio. Why the hell not? You're not supposed to say hell either. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. All rise, three. Hear ye, hear ye. The case of the state versus Bertram Cates is now in session. Be seated. The court will now entertain the closing arguments for the defense first. Mr. Drummond. Your Honor, we waive the right to a closing argument. Would you repeat that, please, Mr. Drummond? Objection! This court can surely see through this subterfuge. Mr. Drummond, by his action, hopes to eliminate both closing arguments. Well, surely this court will not even consider such a deception. Uh, Mr. Drummond? Uh, we claim the defendant not guilty, but since the court has excluded all testimony of scientific experts, we wish for a verdict from this jury now so that we may carry the matter to a higher court. I thought I knew every scheming lawyer's trick in the book, but this, from you, look at me. 
Henry, the magnitude of this offense demands that we both muster every ounce of eloquence and conviction in our closing statements and then let the jury decide. The jury's already decided, haven't they? Gentlemen! Gentlemen! Order! Come to order! I now charge this jury... No, no! Your Honor, with all due respect, I would like to make a closing statement. Please be seated, Mr. Brady. Be seated, sir. I now charge this jury to decide whether the defendant violated Public Act Volume 37, Statute Number 31428, which rejects the teaching of any theory that denies the divine creation of man. You are excused to deliberate. Your Honor, I have a statement relating to these proceedings. The court will grant you an opportunity to make that statement later, Mr. Brady. The court is in recess. <laughs> Gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, sir, we have, Your Honor. We find the defendant guilty. Step right up and get your tickets to the Middle Ages, huh? Sit down. Mr. Cates, you may rise. found guilty of the offense as charged. Do you have anything to say? Well, Your Honor, I'm not a public speaker and I don't have the eloquence of these gentlemen that you've heard here. I'm just a school teacher. Not anymore, you aren't. I was a school teacher. And I feel that I'm... that I have been convicted of an unjust law and I'll continue in the future, as I have in the past, to oppose this law in any way that I can. Bertram Cates, this court has found you guilty of violating Public Act, Volume 37, Statute Number 31428. This is punishable by fine and or imprisonment. This court deems it proper that you be sentenced to a fine of <clears throat> a fine of one hundred dollars. Did you say one hundred dollars? Well, that seems to conclude the business of this trial. Your Honor, prosecution takes exception. Where the issues are so titanic, the court must mete out more drastic punishment I object. to make an example of this transgressor. To show the world... Well, that... just a moment, just a moment. The amount of the fine is of no concern to me. Bert Cates has no intention of paying this fine or any other fine. He would not pay it if it were a single dollar. We intend to appeal this decision to the Supreme Court of the state. Will the court grant 30 days to prepare? Granted. I now declare this court to be adjourned. Your Honor, I now wish to read into the record a state... Objection! Mr. Brady may make any remarks he likes in a political campaign, but our business in Hillsborough is over. Your Honor promised to allow me to make a few pertinent remarks. Yes, yes, and we're all anxious to hear them, sir. 
Defense holds that the court be adjourned. Your Honor, Mr. Drummond's point of procedure is well taken. I'm sure that everyone here will remain after the trial to hear the address. Thank you. I now declare this court to be adjourned. Signy die. Gentlemen, gentlemen, one moment, please. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, could I have your attention, please? Hot roasted Ladies and gentlemen, when I campaign for the presidency of the United States... It must be painful to be almost president three times and have a skull full of inauguration speeches. ...to restore this country to its former greatness, to work for the betterment of the common people, the common people of this blessed land, who hearken to the word of our Lord. The common people, who through all history, have fought... Ladies and gentlemen, my director has told me that our time is now concluded. We'd like to return you to our studios in Chicago. My dear friends, I beg you, listen to me, listen. Think for a moment. Religion is not hostile to learning, but can we ever permit learning that encourages godlessness among our students? I propose a constitutional amendment requiring the Lord's Prayer in all our schools to defend our youth against the evils of evolution. Listen to me, please. I beg of you, we must never stop the work of the Holy Spirit. Don't you see that? I implore you. From the hallowed hills of sacred Sinai came the laws. which have been our bulwarks in our shield, age upon age, Lucy, Lucy. Get a doctor! Get him out of here. Come on, let's get him over to the docks. Excuse us, please. See his face. He looked terrible. Oh, hell, he'll be all right. Give him an hour or so, and Mount Brady will erupt again before nightfall. How are you feeling, young fellow? I don't know. Did I win or did I lose? Millions of people will say you won. They'll read in their paper tonight that you smashed a bad law. You made it a joke. Yeah. But what's going to happen now? You don't suppose something like this is ever finished, do you? Tomorrow, sure as hell, somebody else will have to stand up. And you've helped give them the guts to do it. Rachel. Hello, Bert. I don't need any more shirts. I'm free. For a while, anyway. These are my things, Bert. I'm going away. Where are you going? I don't know, but I'm leaving my father. Rach. But it's my fault that the jury found you guilty. Partly my fault. I helped. Here's the copy of Darwin you gave me. I read it all the way through. I don't understand it, and what I do understand, I don't like. I don't want to believe that I came from apes and monkeys. Drummond, I hope I haven't said anything to offend you. You see, I haven't really thought very much. I was always afraid of what I might think and seemed safer not to think at all. Maybe, maybe what Mr. Darwin wrote is bad. Bad or good, I think ideas have to come out. I think they should be heard. I don't think they ought to pass laws against them. Mr. Brady's dead. How? How did he die? He said it was a heart attack. Why should we weep for Brady? He's cried enough for himself. 
You know what he was? A Barnum Bunkum Bible beating bastard. You smart Alec! You have no right to spit on his religion any more than you have a right to spit on my religion or my lack of it. Well, well, what do you know? Henry Drummond to the defense, even of his enemies. There was much greatness in that man. Oh, should I put that in his obituary? Write what you damn please. How do you write an obituary about someone who's been dead for 30 years? What do you say? What? Well, wait a minute. What was that, uh, that scripture that he quoted there, that prayer meeting proverb, wasn't it? He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind. And the fool shall be servant to the wise in heart. Well, well we're going an odd crop of agnostics this year. I'm getting damn sick of you, Hornbeck. Yeah, why? You never pushed a noun against a verb except to blow up something. Oh, that's a neat lawyer's trick. Accusing the accuser. What am I accused of? I charge you with contempt of conscience, self-perjury, kindness of forethought, and gross sentimentality of the first degree. Why? Because I refuse to erase a man's lifetime. I tell you that Brady had the same right as birth, the right to be wrong. What the hell is this? Be kind to bigots weak. Because Brady is dead, we must be kind to him. A giant once lived in that body. Matt Brady got lost because he looked for a god that was too high up and too far away. You fraud. You hypocrite. You're more religious than he ever was. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll have to get me to a typewriter and hammer out the story of an atheist who believes in God. <laughs> Colonel Drummond. Oh, Bert, I am resigning my commission in the state militia. I hand in my sword. <laughs> How much does it cost for an appeal? I couldn't pay you much. Well, I didn't come here to get paid. I think I better drive myself back to Chicago. Bert, we could leave today, too. There's a train out at 513, and we could be on it. Get my things. Help me. You have a good trip. Hey, you forgot 